guys, welcome back to my channel and uh, strap in because I think today is going to be kind of a long one. I have a lot to talk about. We are going to be doing a swatch and review of Zoya's new Easy Neon collection here. I just got it in the mail, I think yesterday, and so I'm really excited to talk about this. Uh, this is something that I think is kind of new and out of the box for Zoya in particular because they don't really do colors like this too often. Uh, there is one neon collection that they've done in the past that I'm aware of, and it was in 2016. It was the Ultra Brights Neon Collection. So on top of the swatcher review and kind of a information overload that I have for you about this, I also am going to be comparing this collection to that original 2016 neon collection that I have all six pieces of. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned um, because we got a lot to go through. So before we get into the details of like pricing and uh, the collection itself, I just want to say right off the bat, I've heard in the nail polish community of neons being labeled as controversial, which, you know, sounds very dramatic, but I live for drama, so we're just going to go through that. Um, and the reason I've heard them be labeled as controversial is because some people believe that you can't name a polish neon. You can't call it a neon or consider it within that realm if you have to layer it over a white polish for the neon to actually pop. Me personally, I don't care. <laughs> um, you don't get this many nail polishes in your life by caring about that sort of a detail. <laughs> but, you know, some people that's really important. And one of the big things that this collection uh, boasts about is that you don't need to lay you don't need to layer it over anything to get that neon quality. So we're going to be looking at that and we'll compare that to the old neon collection as well. And then the other thing is neons can be streaky and a little bit translucent, you know, because they are I feel like most neons that I have are jellies typically. I don't know if it's just the way that you have to mix the pigment or the type of pigments that uh, are conducive to neons are not very opaque, but most of the neons I have in my collection are jellies. They are streaky upon initial application. They take a little bit of like finagling with. These also claim that you're not gonna have that streakiness. You're gonna be able to have neons built up without any of that white base coat. So we're going to take a look at that as well. Okay, and then just before we get into the actual swatches themselves, I just want to talk about pricing and what you get for your money here. So for me, I pre-ordered these. I got a card in my last Zoya order that said, you know, pre-orders were going to open on April 1st for this collection. So I knew right away, like, I'm going to get this. I set money aside. I knew that this is something I wanted and so, for me, I, I got it at the pre-order price, which I paid $49 for the following things that I got. So I got the full six-piece collection, uh, so I got all six of the neons, and then it also came with the eight-ounce Zoya Remove Plus with, like, the flipper cap, uh, which is, you know, nice. I like the Remove Plus. It's pretty gentle. And then it also came with a Naked Manicure Ultra Glossy Seal. Now individually, the eight ounce flipper bottle is $9.99 and the Glossy Seal is $15. So getting six full size polishes and then these two things for 49 bucks, that was a steal. This has since gone up to the retail price or the intended retail price which I believe is, it is $70 for all three of the things I just mentioned in that bundle. Or you can buy just the six polishes and that is $66. So for four bucks more, you know, you're getting $25 extra in product. So, you know, if you like these things, I would say spend the extra couple bucks get these it's a really good deal the other thing that i wanted to talk about as far as pricing goes is if you like zoya you know zoyas are ten dollars a polish like i don't think there's really been any other variation that i've seen where they were more uh you know the the top coats and stuff like that they can vary but as far as actual nail polishes go i've never seen them more than ten dollars 
These ones, if you buy them individually, are $11 a piece. So that's something to keep in mind too, if you wanted to pick these up. I did get an email the other day from Zoya stating that at the beginning of May, they are going to raise their prices on, uh, well, they didn't, I don't know if they said specifically what, but it sounded like pretty much everything because their, uh, their ingredients are getting more expensive. There's been a lot of increase in that kind of a thing. So they have to start passing some of that increase onto the customer. They didn't talk specifics on prices or, or anything like that, but just know that, uh, I don't know if the $11 price point is here to stay, it might even go up higher. So if you want these, I would say pick them up now before the potential price increase. Oh, and one last like good note is, you know, I pre-ordered these on the first pre-order started shipping on the 15th and mine shipped on the 15th. I got, my package on the 17th, which from shipment to arrival at my door, that is the fastest turnaround I've ever had from Zoya. Like usually it takes a lot longer because I'm pretty sure it all ships ground. So that was pretty nice too. I was pretty excited to be able to get this so that I could make my video on the weekend and put it out for you guys. And with all that being said, we're going to jump into the swatches. I'll show you how these swatch out. Uh, we're going to do three coats for everything because that's what you need to build these up. And then I want to just talk about the comparison with the older Neons collection and just see what you guys think. So up first we have some packaging here. We have a sleeve that is over the top of this box. And then you open this box up and inside is yet another box. And this is where the actual polishes are. It has a magnetic closure. It's really nice. So this would make for a really nice gift for someone if they're into that. And then it has just a card showing all the colors and here they are. Now keep in mind that neons are a little bit hard to capture on film. So we're doing our best here. Up first, we're gonna swatch Oakley. This is described as a fiery bright orange neon. And I would say that in this shot, it does look pretty true to the color. I think when I'm actually swatching it on my nail, the lighting can get a little bit finicky, but uh, you can at least see the performance of these colors here. So these, as you can see, all come already equipped with the Z-Wide brush. I've never used them before this application. So I did have a bit of a difficult time just because I'm not used to Zoya having such a wide brush but I may do, um, as you can see, I am doing three coats on all of these because on the second coat, you can still see a little bit of that visible nail line. And even on the third coat in some of these swatch photos, you'll see there is some visible nail line. Zoya claims you only need two coats for opaqueness, but I did not necessarily find that to be the case. Up next, we have Zelda which is a beaming pink coral neon, according to the website. This collection has two pinks, which, uh, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit of overkill for me, but, you know, I do love a pink neon. I have quite a few of them, so I'm not too upset about it. Another Z-Wide brush here. And as you can see, like I said, the lighting is a little bit off, but this one was very sheer on that first coat. All, pretty much all of them are, and you can see some mild streakiness in the first coat, but when you finish the look after two to three coats, that streakiness all disappears, which Zoya does claim there is no streakiness, so I would say that's pretty accurate. You know, first coat, I don't think you can judge a polish on its first coat unless it claims to be a one coater. So again, you can see, even on this third coat, a little bit of my nail line there, and you'll see it in the swatch photo as well but this is a beautiful color pink. Next, we have Janie, our second pink. This one is described as a hot fuchsia pink neon. I think I like this one a little bit more than the previous one, just cause these are the kinds of pinks that I like. I, I like corals, but they're just not my favorite on my skin tone. We have that white cap Z-Wide brush. Maybe I should just replace these with, uh, black cab ZY brushes since I have so many of them. That way I'll be less stressed out. But anyways, here's the first coat. Not as streaky as the last couple, but definitely some visible nail line there. And I, I think that 
I guess fuchsia is kind of a purpley pink, isn't it? I was going to say this one leans a little bit more purple. I did lose the third coat of footage, but this swatch photo does have three coats. Up next is Banks. This is a vivid violet neon. Now this one I think looks stunning. I love how bright it is. Uh, it's again, hard to capture on camera. I think that even here, it looks a little bit more muted than it actually is because this one and the next two as well are very like bam in your face bright. Whereas like here, uh, it just looks a little duller just because, you know, like I said, lighting is tough. But yeah, this one I was surprised with how sheer it was on these first couple coats just because it looks so opaque in the bottle. And since purple is a darker color anyways, I thought, okay, this one will be a two-coater. But no, this one was probably, probably could have done with a fourth because look at that. You can still see my nail line a little bit. I know nobody's really looking for that, but it does bother me a little bit. And yeah, even in this photo, it looks so much darker than it actually is in real life. Up next is Echo. This is described as a deep lagoon blue neon. Now, I really am a sucker for blues. I probably have a million blues in my collection. Maybe not quite a million, but this one, you know, it fit right in. This one and the purple one are probably my favorites from the collection, although the, the one after this is a green one is pretty good too. I guess I just, I'm so used to seeing like the pink and orange neons that I have enough of those, but blues, purples, greens, I really like to see that in this kind of a finish. So again, visible nail line, but not too streaky. Second coat, again, still a lot of visible nail line. I can, you can see I'm finally getting the hang of the ZY brush though. So at least there's that. But with this third coat, I feel like it covers it up a lot better than I expected it to, especially compared to the others. But you can still see it on my ring finger. I don't know what it is about my ring finger that that visible nail line always shows through. And then last but not least, we have Link, and this is described as an electric Kelly green neon. This one just reminds me of Nickelodeon slime, um, right for your nails. I think that I love colors like this. Uh, it's really pretty, but I am concerned that this one is going to stain if you wear it long term because greens like this always stain my nails. But also, this is the only one I noticed doing this, but... Uh, no matter how long I waited, when I did like the second and third coat, it would kind of pull up against itself on the, the previous layer. So it would be a little bit patchy if you weren't careful. However, I managed to work through that and I got my swatch photo. Now, just real quick to compare to the 2016 collection. I would say that the orange doesn't really have an exact match because the 2016 collection just had three straight up pinks. But as you can see, they're pretty similar as far as the color layout goes. Um, like I said, the pinks were hard to match up, but the blue, purple, and green, obviously there was no other choice but the, the new blue, purple, and green. And as you can see, the, the purple color on camera, it leans a little more blue. Um, but I would say that it, to me, it's a little more purple in real life. The blues look almost exactly the same in the bottle as do the greens however the performance is you know yards different from these new ones like the old ones way more streaky i think that with those thinner brushes it actually does make it more difficult to apply a neon because the way the pigment kind of bunches up in the uh in the base but you can see that out of all of these that the second and third pink are pretty close and the blue and the green are pretty close but there is no orange and there's no purple quite like that and you can see i have gone like old new old new old new etc so just take a look at that so what did you guys think of this new collection overall i really like it, it i think it's cool to see zoya branch out and do something that hasn't really been in their aesthetic yet or isn't really like in line with what I'm used to seeing from their releases. You know, I, lately all I've seen is kind of like softer, nude, like very wearable stuff, you know, wearable. But it's fun to see these like really vibrant types of colors coming from them. And I think if I had to choose a favorite, it, it's hard. I don't know. I think I really like 
the purple because I don't know. I just, purple is one of my favorite colors to wear. Purple and blue. I think purple and blue are like the top uh, colors in my collection right now that I have the most of. So I do really like this collection. I like that they did the pre-order. I like that I was able to get kind of a lot of bang for my buck. You know, I got the, the flipper bottle. I got an extra top coat, which is really nice. And I think the box that they, they shipped this in, I like that it's like a kind of a magnetic closure. I like that brands are doing that. I, it's, it's nice. I'm never going to use it for anything because I don't, I don't need any more boxes. But if I were to buy this as a gift for someone, you know, that's a really nice touch. Now, all that being said, I'm going to complain for the next 10 minutes. So my first like annoyance with this collection is why is the cap white? All your other caps are black. Like it's already stressful enough for me with their mats and their satin polishes that the bottle is like frosted so it doesn't look like the rest of the polish bottles. But to make the cap a different color, I'm like, why? Because all my polishes are in the helmers back there and you know, it's a top down view. So these are just gonna be like, bam, sticking out like a sore thumb, which I guess isn't actually a real problem, but it still annoys me, right? Like I'm gonna have to look at that now and be like, ugh, why? I'm just thinking about how petty I sound. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's a real thing. I, I hate when the bottles change. I think I've talked about this before. I don't like, you know, when there's like a sudden rebrand in a, in a polish. And I wonder if this is even like a, like a permanent thing or if this is just for this collection. Are they gonna do white tops for everything or is it just for the neons? And I think I can understand why they did it for the neons because having the white caps on these really helps the color in the bottle pop. You know, it's like if you put a black cap on it, it kind of sombers it up. It kind of dulls it out. And so that's, I think it's a good choice from like a marketing perspective. It really makes you like when you look at them all on the little sleeve here, it just makes it all look way more like bam in your face. And so I think that's smart of them, but as someone who has like 90 Zoya nail polishes, I'm just really sad about it. <laughs> the other interesting change that they made is, as I'm sure you saw in my swatches, these all have Z wide brushes in them. Now I have probably like 40 Z wide brushes just sitting in their boxes in my nail polish storage because I've never ever used one before this, which you think I would have tested one out, but these, the ZY brush is really wide. So I just wasn't super interested in it. I like probably like a medium width brush, uh, but I do like wider brushes. I think they're nice, especially for coverage. And while I personally didn't really love these brushes, I think that a lot of people do like the ZY brushes. And so I do commend Zoya for choosing to just put them in the bottle right from the get-go because ZY brushes are two bucks a piece on top of the nail polish. So you, you're paying $10 for your Zoya and then $2 to change your brush. So that's an added expense that's kind of annoying. And I, I wonder if that's why these are $11. They're like kind of comping you a little bit on the cost. But um, also to get your nail polish and buy an extra brush, it's kind of wasteful because you gotta just get rid of the extra brush that was already in the bottle. And I think that's why I never swapped any of mine over is because I just felt kind of weird about like taking the 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 polish or just taking the brush out of the bottle, throwing it away and um, then just replacing it with a whole new chunk of plastic. I wonder if they are recyclable. I know that Zoya is pretty good about having, you know, recyclable and disposable products uh, or eco-friendly products, but I haven't looked too much into that because I just never swapped the brushes out. So maybe I should take a look into that and see. Maybe, I guess I it doesn't really matter because I don't like the CY brush. I need to just give them to somebody. So regarding the actual formula of these polishes, um, as with most neons, these do dry down super fast. So time between coats is kind of sped up, which is really nice. We love a quick drying nail polish in this household. 
Um, but again, as with most neons, they do dry down incredibly matte. So if you're not into that look, you're going to need a glossy top coat, which I would recommend anyways, because it just helps with the longevity of your manicure. And um, I just like the glossy look. I mean, matte looks cool too, but even when I do a matte look, I usually put a glossy top coat down first, just because I've, I've heard that that helps with the longevity of your manicure. And, you know, I've found it to be true. So if you don't like a uh, matte look, definitely throw a top coat over these. And uh, as far as the formula goes again, I needed three coat coverage for most of these. If Actually, I, all my swatches, I did three coats. All my swatch photos, I did three coats. Even on the swatch wheels, I did three coats because it really is what built up that color opacity enough to remove any of the uh, minor streakiness that you did get from these polishes. I personally don't have a problem with doing three coats, um, but I think that when you claim your nail polish is not going to need like any kind of a base, you know, one or two coats to me, I think when I think of like, oh, this polish doesn't need a base, you really should only need one or two coats to, to coverage. To me, two coats is the norm for a nail polish. Anything below it is insane. It's, it's exceptional. And anything higher than two coats is like a minor inconvenience to just kind of annoying. So three coats for something like this, it's not a big deal to me, but at the same time saying like, oh, you don't need a base, seems kind of strange when if you just threw a white base and then did one coat of this, you probably would have full opacity right then and there. But that being said, even with the three coats, as you saw from my swatch pictures, you can still see my nail line in a couple of them. And that was like, even though that was under a ring light, I could see it without the ring light. You know, when I was just sitting there and I'm like looking at my nails, I could see the the nail line on some of them. And some of it might be application. Some of it might be just my nails are longer than the average user. But, you know, if that's going to be an issue for you, I would take that into consideration for me. I don't care if you can see my nail line. I am beyond <laughs> caring about something like that. Uh, I used to care a lot. I used to think it looked weird. I used to think I was like, oh, people are going to think my nails look gross. I don't care anymore. I think that it's my aesthetic choice <laughs> that you could see my nail line. And the only person who's really looking that closely is me. But like I said, if that bothers you, keep that in mind when you're selecting the colors you choose. And then just the last thing I wanted to touch on was my comparison to the older collection. Now, I don't know if this was supposed to be like a shot for shot remake of that. It seems like at least with the green, blue and purple, very similar. Um, and then they had like three orangey pinks and here you have two pinks and an orange in the new one. So it seems very similar, but then again, there's only so many colors in the rainbow. And if you're gonna do neons, you might as well just do a neon rainbow. So it might just be, it might mean nothing. It's not like this is a conspiracy, but I definitely think as far as formula goes, as far as vibrancy of the colors, uh, and as far as like just all the application in general, the new collection is far better, just outshines the old one by a long shot. And I don't even think that you can get the old, the 2016 collection anymore. I checked their website, I looked for a couple of them, nothing was popping up in the search. So I wonder if they just kind of wiped them out and brought in the new ones and said, okay, we're gonna forget those ever existed. I wouldn't be surprised, you know? So with all of that long-windedness, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of this collection. Did you pick anything up? Did you get the pre-order? Are you gonna pick this up? What was your favorite? Um, do you have the original Neon collection? Do you think it really even compares to this at all? I don't think so. But yeah, just let me know down below what you think, what you picked up. I would love to hear it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.